Welcome to DM Neurology Made Easy. This is the ninth episode of Five Neurophilia Quick Revision Series. Today we will discuss the fourth part of dementia series. So let's go into the video. So the early appearance of Parkinson's disease, Parkinson features in association with fluctuating alertness, visual hallucination, or delusional misidentification suggest. So uh, this one we had just brushed through and discussed uh, in the previous when we were discussing our case. So we'll just go through what are delusional misidentifications also. Uh, criteria for this disease. So we will discuss that too in a brief. Previously, uh, we used to include uh, neural sensitivity also for this. So uh, what we are dealing with is actually dementia with Lewy body. Most of them have answered it correctly. Uh, so dementia is there, uh, which will include attention, mainly attention problem, and as well as visuospatial uh, problems. There will be fluctuating cognition. That is, there is there will be delirium, and on top of it, there will be visual hallucination. And as you know, it is a type of a Parkinsonism syndrome. That is alpha synucleopathy uh, is there, and there will be REM sleep behavior. Then there will be neural sensitivity. So such a patient, when the patient becomes restless, if you give haloperidol, the patient will become either restless, more restless, drowsy, or his Parkinsonism symptoms will increase. And on top of it, the patient will have other findings. So this is the classical feature of a dementia with Lewy body disease. And in the question, something was there, patient will be having misidentification syndromes. So what are the misidentification uh, syndromes you know of? One is the Capgras syndrome and the Fregoli syndrome. Capgras is one where a close family member is replaced by a stranger. So, and uh, Fregoli is the other way around. So, uh, as you know, even Parkinson's disease can have dementia. And also dementia with Lewy body is uh, always having a dementia. So how will you differentiate between these two? So uh, this, there is a criteria, there is a time, time criteria. So P, P, PDD, that is uh, Parkinson's disease dementia is distinguished from dementia with Lewy body by the presence of Parkinsonism preceding cognitive decline by at least, so the answer is actually one year. So Parkinson's disease should proceed more than there should be more than one year of Parkinson's disease then followed by dementia to be called as Parkinson's disease dementia. If So it uh, PDD is distinguished from DLB by presence of Parkinsonism uh, preceding cognitive decline for at least one year. And as we know, 80% of Parkinson's disease will develop uh, dementia. So, and uh, FDA has approved Rivastigmine as the drug that not donopacil, rivastigmine as the drug of choice for uh, Parkinson's disease dementia. Uh, this is actually taken from Bradley. So rapid progression of dementia over a few weeks or months is there. So there is rapid progression with rigidity and myoclonus. So what is your diagnosis? It's a quite straightforward question. Uh, if it comes, there should be no confusion. Uh, so what is your diagnosis? What, what is this what uh, you are seeing? This is actually what, what is called as a cortical ribboning. And what is this aromax pulvinar sign? Reverse hockey stick sign. This is seen in variant CJD. And we, we were discussing something previously. This is called Heidenhan clinical variant. That is, in our case, uh, which we are discussing first now, that is the posterior cortical atrophy variant. Sometimes CJD, if it is rapidly progressing, can it's a close differential. This posterior cortical atrophy, close differential, one is actually Heidenham variant of CJD, or it could be even DLB is also a close differential. So rapidly progressing dementia, we have to remember the code of vitamins. So vitamins V for vascular, could be either a multi-infarct state or strategic infarct. What is strategic infarct is an infarct, a small infarct, even a thalamic infarct can cause a memory impairment, vasculitis, any AV malformation, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, posterior reversible encephalopathy, etc. Infections, toxics, metabolic causes, autoimmune, that is Hashimoto's encephalopathy, any encephalitis, autoimmune encephalitis like NMDA, etc. Carcinoma, 
iatrogenic that is v i t a m i n s so remember like these all any patient coming with rapid progression of dementia you have to think of all this before branding it as uh, dementia alzheimer's disease uh, ftd etc etc even alzheimer's can have a fast progression that also you have to keep in mind so look for all these treatable causes or reversible causes and look for this fast progression of dementia so any clinical scenario you get in case of in case of uh, mcqs you and uh, any clues would be there like csf was given done for example a, a patient with hiv so sometimes the patient will be having pmle so that kind of scenario you may get so a, a pa patient with uh, multiple sclerosis uh, patient on uh, such and such drugs so th that may be a pmle so that all we have to see so which one of the following is not an alpha alpha synucleopathy so this is a very simple question uh, to relieve your tension i have uh, put this question but uh, this question you shouldn't miss for uh, very newcomers i have put the question so i'll tell you one thing there is something called chronic traumatic encephalopathy also chronic traumatic encephalopathy this could also come in your mcqs chronic traumatic encephalopathy this that is also a tauopathy chronic tra uh, traumatic encephalopathy which also presents as dementia Uh, so that is also a tauopathy instead of parkinson's disease msa dlb uh, these all alpha synucleopathies in, and you check and the answer uh, that one more mcq uh, option would be chronic traumatic encephalopathy so don't get confused that is a tauopathy so keep that in mind regarding vascular uh, the high a higher hutchinsky score is uh, useful in diagnosing so as we are dealing with dementia uh, we may get lot of mixed dementias in our uh, clinical scenario so in case of de mixed dementia how will you differentiate between uh, different kind of mixed dementias so this it is uh, done with the help of scoring system we have uh, some uh, other scoring system have you heard of adam and hakim score that adam and hakim score is uh, uh, or a triad adam and hakim triad is used uh, is actually used in nph normal pressure hydro hydrocephalus uh, hutchinsky score is a scoring used to differentiate alzheimer's disease from vascular dementia so it uh, it helps so a patient with alzheimer's disease like kind of uh, symptoms or a pathology uh, has mixed kind of dementia we can differentiate vascular dementia from other dementias with the help of this hutchinsky score so if uh, we look at the abruptness abrupt onset of this uh, pathology step wise deterioration whether there is fluctuation whether there is risk factors whether there is stroke and focal signs whether the patient has got weakness re reflexes exaggerated etc etc and we can find uh, make a score of it and if the score is more than 7 we it suggests that the patient has got vascular dementia and this is called a hutchinsky score now see this uh, video This patient, uh, I just want you to see this video. Two guys in the orthe. Yeah. Yeah. One round, but can't matter. Like two guys in the orthe. So what all do you find in this pa patient? Sadaa one. One of them, can't matter. Like in the orthe. Ah, can't matter. Like in the orthe. I'll. One of them, can't matter. Like in the orthe. I'm asking. Uh, I am asking him not to touch anywhere. Keep his hands still. so i'll uh, show you the video again and again uh he is unable to do his day to day activities by himself unable to brush uh, by himself he has got rigidity asymmetric rigidity over his uh, right side asymmetric rigidity over his right side and now, now he has developed uh, involuntary movements of his left side so uh now you can answer it with your poll asymmetric rigidity over the right side so it is a, a kind of an asymmetric parkinsonism only two parkinsonism basically have got asymmetry one is the idiopathic parkinsonism the other one is the cbgd so and it is no no history of dlb was discussed so it is cannot be dlb 
and uh, what we have seen there is actually patient was trying to get hold of the uh, table when even when asked to stay still as you can see the with the left hand he is trying to hold of the right uh, right hand and also trying to get hold of the table so it is a kind of a alien limb phenomenon so cbgd also has got dementia and uh, that is memory impairment cortico basal degeneration and also has got apraxia it has got very many features you have to uh, read through thoroughly cbgd it even has got uh, many features you have to go to uh, go and read through in uh, detail uh, so this is an advanced question uh, this is the latest question uh, one of the advancement uh, which came in may 2020 uh, so with this uh, which of the following and uh, which among the following f18 Uh, tracers have developed and approved for clinical use by FDA for tau imaging dementia. Read the question once again. Uh, I'll give you one minute. If you have proper, uh, if you can, if you are able to sort out properly, see for the question, read the question, read the options. You have the answer. Even if you don't know anything regarding the options, you are you will be able to answer the question. Just see what is the clue. actually you are asked for tau imaging in dementia and you have that tau inside the mcq itself so i'll just start the poll uh, these are all uh, given in harrison these are actually amyloid imaging uh, things for dementia and this one is was approved by fda in may 2020 so latest in dementia also you have to get abreast with so that was my point and uh, this actually even if you don't know the answer just read through you try to even if you don't know the answer just try to read through and you have got a clue that is, there is a tau here and there is a tau here also rest doesn't have so that is a clue here so that is regarding uh, imaging so newer imaging techniques so uh, in case of alzheimer's disease uh, and other dementias not much of imaging findings are there Uh, alchemists we have discussed in the last class regarding the imaging findings so uh, float tau zipper was approved by fda in 2020 first fda uh, approved molecule for imaging for tau protein and uh, these are the uh, fda approved for amyloid tracers that is uh, and that is our alchemists disease these these three and uh, this one last time i had discussed this cingulate island sign in fdg pet is specific for which one of the following disease so this is just a uh, revision question but this is being repeatedly asked so you need to know it but i'll tell you what it is uh, i have discussed this in the last class so by now you should know it this has been used in clinical practice to differentiate this disease from alzheimer's disease it is actually dementia with lewy body so uh, i'll tell you what it is so there is preservation of this cingulate island cingulum the cingulate gyrus you know it is the medial part cingulate gyrus so as you see uh, this brown this is actually a part this a first box what you see in the brain is actually the normal brain and uh, what happens in alzheimer's disease this green areas are actually not taking any uh, this actually is decreased in uptake what happens is this this is actually this island is what we are take talking about this island this island is called the cingulate island sign you may not have understood right now also but don't worry this island of area which is spared in case of um, dementia with lewy body is called cingulate island sign in case of ftg pet so keep that in mind and uh, which is the least preferable time to give once daily dosing of tonopasil last time we have discussed regarding all the drugs in case of alzheimer's disease thoroughly there were lots of drugs we have learned uh, remember the mnemonic doctor pg tonopasil rivastigmine tacrine galantamine memantine etc uh, of which tacrine is not used because of hepatotoxicity uh, so all that i ask you to read all the side effects of the drug because the side effect is actually vivid dreaming diarrhea nausea etc uh medication should be given in the morning instead of evening uh so that will so if you give the drug in the evening there is more likely chance of getting vivid dreams so that is the problem so give it in the morning rather than in the 
uh, evening and other side effects you are supposed to uh, know properly so i think uh, we have completed stroke and dementia read properly harrison and bradley you know the chapters very well uh, so thank you